Hey everyone, it's Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. I truly have a, a very cool gadget this week. Stay tuned. He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. Welcome, everyone. We are on episode 209. It's been a while since I've been in the studio. I think it's probably been about two months, but uh, we're here, and uh, certainly good to be back uh, under studio conditions. It's uh, a lot easier for me to produce the show because I have people that actually record it and produce the show for me. I just do the, uh, the yakety yak. So we have a great show for you today, uh, an interesting gadget. So let's, let's get right into it. As I said, we're on episode 209 and it's easy to get to the gadget professor. Just go to our webpage. That would be the gadget professor.com, the gadget professor.com. And when you're there on the right hand side, you will see the, uh, uh, special page. It says important pages newsletter. If you just click there, uh, you'll get our newsletter, which comes out every Thursday evening. As soon as the episode is posted, you will get a newsletter. It's totally free. I don't use your email address for anything else but the show notes. And what that does is it uh, hyperlinks every single thing that we spoke about on today's show. Uh, you get a hot link and you could find out more information. So uh, you don't have to take notes. Or if you listen to the audio portion only of the Gadget Professor, uh, you don't have to worry about taking notes because the show notes do that for you. Also, uh, you can listen to us. The easiest way to get to us really is on iTunes or the Roku box. Uh, we're on pretty much every every glass service that's out there. You can get the Gadget Professor. Of course, uh, you can email me 24 hours a day, seven days a week at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. And I do answer all my emails. I got several this week. Uh, last week's show was on the uh, uh, Amazon Echo, and I got quite a bit of mail, quite a few questions. Uh, it was pretty interesting. And um, I don't know if we'll get to the questions this week, but certainly I will answer those emails. Uh, and uh, I will talk maybe a little bit about some of the questions next week because uh, I'm still getting emails with questions. So uh, a lot of interest on that Amazon Echo. Also, uh, you can follow us on Facebook. That would be uh, uh, Facebook forward slash The Gadget Professor. And then last but not least, uh, my favorite page, which I don't talk about a lot anymore, but uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Gadget Professor, at Gadget Professor. And it's cool to follow me on Twitter for two reasons. One, you get this beautiful, uh, you can go to my Rebel Mouse page, which is Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor. It's all in the show notes. But what this does is it takes the tweets, and we tweet hundreds of times a day about every single gadget that comes out or that's announced that day. And you actually have a, a pictorial of those gadgets. And if you see something that you like, you can click on it. Now, this page is dynamic in the sense that it's constantly changing. So as new things are uh, released and uh, discussed on websites, um, my tweets actually pick that up. So you can go back to this page several times a day, and you'll actually see that it's, it's dynamic in the sense that it's, it changes constantly. You can find all kinds of cool things. So uh, that's one reason to follow me on Twitter. The other reason is that uh, I frequently will put out uh, show is available, so you'll find it instantly uh, if you're on Twitter, as well as get the show notes. So let's move on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit, a lot of bit, about hacking today. Hacking has <clears throat> taken over the news this week. It's crazy. Speaking of crazy, uh, Kapersky, which is one of the uh, better softwares out there for uh, preventing uh, viruses, uh, they were hacked. And uh, they have a really cool article here on uh, Graham Cluley. This will be in the show notes, but uh, I kind of like this. Uh, oftentimes, it's not the fact that your business has been hacked that you will lose your customer's confidence, but the way the company responds to the actual hacking itself. When a company suffers uh, an attack, presuming it notices it at all, because many, com many companies are hacked and they don't even know they've been hacked, uh, there's several courses of action that you could take, and I kind of like this. Uh, one, you can pretend it never happened. Don't tell your customers and hope that no one ever finds out, and then they go into a little explanation. Two, you can put out a bland security advisor statement hidden away on a remote corner of your website explaining how you take security very seriously. And the last one is admit it, yeah, we got hacked, but it wasn't that bad. 
and we don't believe the customers or partners are affected whatsoever. And that's what uh, Kapersky uh, actually did. And you can read the article. It will be in the show notes. But, man, when, 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 a, when a company that makes virus protection and is on top of hacking procedures, when they get hacked, <laughs> you just got to scratch your head. Uh, the wonderful state of Arizona, where I am at now, uh, that article just blew out of there. Let's see if we can get that back in. Uh, Arizona agency's website hacked, and it's still down. Uh, most unfortunate group that calls itself the Middle East Cyber Army hacked into the State Department of Weights and Measures website over the weekend, and this, it's the second known attack uh, in the state of Arizona. Uh MECA also hacked into the site of the arts and soul of the Scottsdale group base that produces children's musical performances. Why that's a target, I don't know. You know, what I think happens is uh, there's bots out there, robots out there, and if they can hack into your website, they do. But uh, it's, it's just, it's just never-ending. It's every, it's every day. Uh, speaking of uh, high-profile companies that are getting hacked, uh, the heck with Kapersky. How about Apple iCloud? That's right. Apple iCloud hacked millions, millions of iOS 8.3 passwords targeted as part of a white hat security research effort. So that's not too cool. Uh, you probably didn't know that was hacked. I will have the article here. Prepare to change your iOS password. A security researcher claims to have developed a way to send iCloud users fake phishing emails that by exploiting a security uh, bug, an Apple system could make millions of consumer of, of customer passwords extremely vulnerable. So uh, you can read that article. Uh, it just goes on and on. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, federal workers, you've heard this. It was on the headlines of every single paper in the world, actually, that uh, uh, the massive hack that may, have been uh, that, that may have stolen the personal information of four million, four million federal employees appears to be designed uh, to build a vast database which could be preparation for future attacks by China against the United States. Cyber uh, security experts advising government told CNN Friday afternoon. So this is a huge article on that and there's lots of articles on this. Very scary stuff and uh, I think the bottom line is uh, uh, it's quite easy to, hack, to have an internet site hacked. Uh, if you don't have a staff, a full-time staff, working on it 24 hours a day, if you are in possession of a, a lot of data, uh, a lot of customers' personal information, uh, you have an obligation to protect it. But the truth of the matter is, uh, in today's world, it just, it just can't be done, which is why I still am not a big fan of cloud services, and I get hammered on this all the time. Uh, I know people use the iCloud. I know that you use uh, various backup services uh, to back up your computer in the cloud. I'm just, uh, I'm just afraid of it. I just am. The bigger the resources that you have in terms of having that database, the more likely you are to get hacked and you're a target. Uh, if you build your own cloud, and I've shown multiple ways here on the Gadget Professor how you can do that very, very cheaply. Very, it's very affordable to build your own cloud. And uh, a couple hundred bucks, and you got your own security, your own cloud, and you're not a target because you're not housing millions and millions of people's passwords, usernames, credit cards, social security numbers, so on and so forth. So if you're an individual, you may want to consider having your own cloud. Uh, if you're a business, you better pay attention to uh, what you're doing because uh, you're a target. All right, enough of that. Let's get into some free apps. Everybody loves free apps, and this is a great free app. It's called XN View, and this is an efficient multimedia viewer, a browser, and a converter. And this does a lot of things. It allows you to view your images, your thumbnail view of all your uh, photographic images, full screen view, film strip view, slideshow view with special effects, and you can do an image comparison, and it goes on and on. If you want to edit, it actually allows you to do some very uh, routine types of editing that you'd need to do on almost any photograph today. You could resize, you can rotate, you can crop. There's lossless rotation and crop. Uh, adjust the brightness, the contrast, the auto levels, the auto contrast. Modify colors, depth, palette. Apply filters and effects. So it's pretty full blown. And it also allows you to create web pages. It allows you to make slideshows, contact sheets, uh, video thumbnail galleries file listings, and a strip of images. And I'm kind of laughing because uh, 
uh, it brings up the fact that it will allow you to do a contact sheet. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a contact sheet is, uh, years ago when they had film photography, uh, particularly black and white, you'd always make a contact sheet. So if you had 12 or 24 or 36 shots, what you would do is there would be little squares on an 8 by 10 or 8 and a half by 11 uh, piece of photographic paper, and it would show you a little crouton of each image that's called a contact sheet, and uh, you don't see them around much at all lately. Uh, because uh, it's so easy to take a digital photograph and just look at it on, on, on a browser or on this XN viewer. So uh, last week, I, I actually, for the first time in many years, had a had a need to uh, <laughs> I had a need to get a contact sheet, and uh, it took me a while to figure out what program would do that. And uh, I finally figured it out, and I was just kind of laughing that I I hadn't printed out a contact sheet in many years. And the last time I printed a contact sheet uh, was when I was a professor at Boston State College and I actually developed the film and made a contact sheet that way. Uh, I needed the contact sheet because I, I have a, a rental property in Rhode Island and uh, we had some students there and uh, they did an extreme amount of damage, which is not untypical. Uh, I had four bedrooms and I had four doors with giant holes. And anyway, uh, when I had to uh, basically give them an accounting of what they owed me, uh, I had to take pictures of everything, and I didn't want to send them uh, 150 photographs, so I just made a contact sheet and sent that along for their convenience so they can verify that the damage that was done was actually done by them. Anyway, uh, contact sheets are pretty cool. Rolling right along here, uh, Google does it again. This is so cool. I was checking this out last night. Uh, you've heard of Google Earth, but uh, right now if you go to Google Maps, you can actually get underwater uh, if you put in oceans, you can actually go anywhere in the world, click on it, and you actually can uh, uh, see uh, what it looks like underwater in 3D. And you have the ability, uh, as you can see here, to, to scroll in, uh, scroll out, go to the left, the right, and just basically search on whatever you want at any part of the, uh, of the world. So it's, you know, kids love this. It's really cool. I love it. And uh, again, Kids are off for the summer in many places. This is a great way to uh, keep them occupied, have them learn, teach them a little bit about geography, the ocean, the environment, and all kinds of things. So uh, it's totally free. Just go to Google Maps and uh, uh, put in oceans, and, and, and you'll see this. And you can actually click on, uh, on different parts that, uh, of the ocean, different things that they've already mapped. Uh, Freeport, Grand Bahama, uh, here's a sunken ship. I mean, the quality of the images are quite good. You can, again, scroll right into it, uh, rotate all around it, 360. It's, it's very cool, and uh, I like it a lot, and I think you'll like it. Now, rolling right along, we have Get Current Download, and the current download that we'll talk about this week is MSN News App. If you're a news junkie like I am, this is a cool app, totally free. Uh, using the new MSN News App, you'll find the best in-class a content from market leaders around the world, including the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, CNN, AOL, including TechCrunch, and uh, a variety of other uh, topics, uh, Bon Appetit, uh, Vanity Fair. Uh, it basically takes all of those different feeds and puts them into one app. I really like that. Again, it's totally free, and you might want to check that out. That's the MSN News app. And now for our last app of the day. This is called Screen, screen, screen Blur. And Screen Blur is a freeware screen locker app. And what this does is it will lock your PC and you can't, you, there's no way around it. If you don't have the code, you're not going to get in. And it's totally free. It's another level of security. So if you're at your office and they allow you to lock down your computer or want you to lock down your computer, this is another way to prevent someone uh, from getting in because if they don't have your username and password, uh, they're not going to get in. And there's a bunch of other things, other things that it will offer you. Auto lock locks the screen when the user does not use the mouse and keyboard for a while. Auto start. The program starts with the window and is already locked. You can also lock the screen with a left click um, on its tray icon or after you set or change the password. So it's a pretty cool app and uh, it's totally free and I think you'll like it. I need to click back here and shut this off. I don't know why that's running but in any event. And now we are going to go to the gadget of the day and uh, let me shrink this screen down just a tad here. 
Uh, looks like we're, we're overdriving there on the screen. There we go. Uh, today we are doing a gadget that's not, uh, well, it is electronic in nature, but it's not the typical gadget that we would do. This is truly a gadget. And now and then when I find a tool that uh, is convenient, affordable, and I like, I'll do a quick review of it. And that's the case this week. We have uh, a, basically it's an electric drill, if you will, and uh, it's made by Channel Lock. And this is called the, uh, you know, let's see, now, now I made it too small. Let's, let's just pick this up a little bit here. This is called the Rapid Fire Quick Loading Power Screwdriver. And it's quite an interesting device. I've had this for about a month now, and uh, I really like it. And it's for basically taking screws in, taking screws out, and it's a lithium-ion battery that's inside of this. And it keeps a charge for quite some time. I charged this once, and uh, it's been about, again, maybe two months that I haven't had to charge this. Basically, all it comes with is the actual drill itself and uh, the power cord right here. So this plugs into the wall, and of course this is gonna plug into the screwdriver itself, and when this is plugged in, there's a little red light here that's quite bright that shows that it's charging. When it's charged, it will go green, or the red light will go out, I don't remember which, but uh, once it's charged, you, you, you will keep this charged for a long time, and I've used this a fair amount. Now, what's unique about this is that the drill bits are already loaded, they're preloaded, with the drill so that when you buy this drill you don't have to buy separate bits and I'm always looking for the right bit what's nice about this is I don't know if you can see but I'll try to hold it up I don't have camera 2 set up here today there we go but uh, there's a cartridge here and this rotates and you can hear the snap and you can see the bits that it has and it comes with a very good assortment of bits. It has your Phillips screwdrivers, your slot screwdrivers, it has a Torx uh, uh, bit and a couple other bits. So basically on top there's a window here and as you rotate this barrel you can actually see the bit that you want. So uh, right now I'm going to turn this to a, a, a Phillips head driver and when you see the bit that you want on the side here, both sides, there's a little I'll call it a clutch, and you just push this forward. You squeeze these two um, red pieces together, and you push and you pull forward. Uh, oops, like so. Now, if it doesn't pull, it means that this this barrel isn't centered, which is not a big deal. But of course, it jams. This is the first time it's done that. Let's see here. Very interesting. Let's try it again. There we go. Uh, Occasionally, if you don't get this exactly between the two springs, it will kind of jam. So you just wiggle it a little bit, and it comes out actually quite easy. So uh, it slides back, and it slides out. And there's the actual bit. There's a forward and a reverse button, which is very conveniently located. You just hit it on the side. And then there's a middle place where it puts it in neutral, and the device is actually off. So if I want to go forward, want to go reverse, and what's really nice about it, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, I guess you can see that, there's an extremely bright LED light that turns on so you can see what it is that you're screwing around with. So that's a good feature. Now, one thing people don't realize is that these bits do come out, and they're the standard quarter-inch bits, so any standard quarter-inch bit that you have, you can use in this drill. Obviously, it's convenient to have all these bits actually built into the uh, barrel here and when you're done you just pull it back and it retracts it so again it pops out and it goes back in there and then you can turn the barrel to whatever else you want to do uh, some of these actually come color coded this one does not this one has like PZ2 which would mean that it's a Phillips head or whatever the case may be uh, if you lose some of these bits all you have to do essentially is just buy a new pack of bits and you can preload them wherever you, you know, back into the barrel. But you're going to have to get the small type of bits because uh, the larger ones won't work. But these are readily available pretty much anywhere. And, uh, you know, you're just going to replace the bit here, buy a new one and just put it in. Or if you have a particular size or a particular style of bit that you want to incorporate in the barrel, it's very simple to load your own bits. 
Other people have asked me if you can use an extension. Yes, you can. You can get a quarter-inch extension and then put the bits on that. Obviously, you're not going to pull the trigger because you're going to basically go and over. You're going to push that bit out is what will happen. So this will take any standard bit. It works real well. It holds a charge for quite some time. It's well built, and it's a very, very, very handy gadget. If you look on uh, Amazon, it's $24.94. Uh, if you really study Amazon, you can buy these in a variety of places. I know, uh, I believe I picked mine up at, uh, at Sam's Club for, uh, I think, 18 bucks, and uh, they're available. It says right here on Amazon that they're available from other stores also for $17.95. So you can shop around and uh, again, anywhere between 18 and 24 dollars. They're really worth it. They're very handy to have if you're always looking for a screwdriver or the right bit and don't have it. This will definitely solve that problem. So I thought we'd take a look at some some different type of gadget this week to break up the monotony of uh, of the electronic gadgets that we always do. Uh, I really like this. As I said, it's well made. It does a great job. It's it's handy as can be. The only complaint that I have, and it's not a big complaint, is that it doesn't have a heck of a lot of torque of power. So if you're going to use this uh, on something that you're going to need a lot of power to get the screw in or out, uh, this is not the device that you would use. If you have a computer and you want to take the screws out of that, or wall outlet plates, or just routine, easy, low-maintenance jobs within the house, this will definitely do it. When you're talking about driving screws into a porch or, or wood or something like that, this does not have a lot of torque, but that's not really what it's made for. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I enjoyed bringing it to you. We would love to have you tell your friends uh, to watch The Gadget Professor. We're trying to expand uh, uh, our audience as always. And we will be back next Thursday with a brand new episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. See everybody next week. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.